Glitch City, 2070 X AD. A city that shouldn't exist. A tax haven where corporations and criminal empires reign supreme. In this place, all human life has been infected with nanomachines to keep them in check. Over them stand the White Knights, who exist to enforce the, cor <laughs> the corrupt government's laws. Here, brutality in all its forms is an everyday reality. The quality of life for the non-powerful decreases at an alarming rate. For many, this can be overwhelming. Some devote themselves to their jobs, their families, or even their studies. Some look for ways to escape this place, and others just give up. But for many of them, the answer lies at the bottom of a glass. On a small road just seconds away from the main street, somewhere near the slums, you can find the Hall A of the BTC certified bar coded VALL1. That's a mouthful, so we just call it Valhalla. A small oasis in the middle of the concrete desert, a fountain of spirits waiting for tired souls. And it's here where this story unfolds. Hey guys, I'm Wench Fairy and welcome to Valhalla, the cyberpunk bar, cyberpunk bar tending game. Many moons ago, a couple years maybe, I played the demo or slash prologue for this game on the channel. And here we are to play the full game. What is this plus sign? Oh. Oh, look, we can play the prologue or we can play the demo. Hmm. I think we just want to play the game. Oh. Everything's fine. Um, that's all okay. I want the scan lines. Yeah, I definitely want the scan lines. So let's start a new game. This game is best played getting comfortable. Grab some drinks, some snacks, and enjoy. So sit back and relax. We hope you have a good time. This is pretty much a visual novel. So there's going to be a lot of reading. Not a lot of like twitchy gameplay, but I like it that way. Anna, psst. Hey, over here. Boo! Up there in the screen? No, right here. How is that for an entrance? Come on, Joe, look sharp. The game's starting and the player needs a good first impression of its main character. I know you served a bunch of Tokyo Glad Corgis over the weekend and the bar will eventually close. That's a reference from the prologue. So you should go, there's a playlist for that on the channel. You should go watch it. And I'll admit my little prank on you might've gone a bit overboard. But remember, life is 90% how you take it. Stay focused and look at the brighter side of things. I have no idea what the brighter side is, but you should totally find it. In any case, you should totally check that parcel you just got. See ya. Jill, dot, dot, dot. Oh, just a dream. There's something near the door. Chapter one, Primera. This game is great. I'm very happy to be playing it. Your membership to Shining Fingered will be automatically renew on the 17th. Make sure your account has at least $800 by then. Make sure to save your data using the Life Backup app. You can now browse the Augmented Eye. Four. So who's the letter from? Nobody. Okay, so this is 50% of the interface of this game. That's us. We're Jill. This is four, our cat. This is our apartment. This is our smartphone. Look at all the things we have. We don't actually have that much right now. We have music. So we can listen to the soundtrack for the game. We'll get to that in a bit. We have save. I'll save real quick. See, I've played this before, but it's been a long time. And then we have the augmented eye. This is the newspaper for this place. Um, let's see. Mass immigration continues as Quincy reveals new economic adjustments. Um, <laughs> this comes after revealing new economic measures for the city, which most analysts consider to be useless for the current environment. They don't know shit, says the Prime Minister. There is a bunch of swearing in this game, fair warning, and it's all, well, it's based in a bar, so there's lots of drinking. If any of that bothers you, this is the wrong game for you. 
Wonderlanders are the newest security threat. If you thought LS Rabbit was good at cracking the most complicated security protocols in the world, then this new group will certainly blow your mind. They've yet to make as big an impact as Alice Rabbit. So Alice Rabbit is like the world's premier hacker. Um, yeah. Cyborg in Heels returns to the Super Silver Thunderdome. It's a massive stage show about a cyborg fighting terrorism while wearing heels. Well, that's fascinating. Okay. Those are all the those are all the news stories today. So home. We have no other apps to add. And see, she comments on the news stories as we read them. That was the cyborg in heels. Wonderlanders, I wonder what Alma thinks of this whole thing. You'll meet her in a bit. What? Mass immigration. Would you leave? Not without you. We're not gonna leave our kitty behind. So we've read everything on our phone. That's just the regular settings. We have no money. So we should just go to work. Tuesday, December 13th. We're a bartender. Hello. <laughs> hey there, Jill. John. <laughs> when will you admit you have a John face, Gil? When you, or Jill? I guess Jill, if his name is Jillian. So he'll admit he has a John face when I let people call me Jules. My name is Jill. Quiet. Are you okay? You look distracted. Where's the boss? To know, she went out to buy some stuff and did you hear what I just told you? You said you said something? Yes, that you look distracted. Very, very distracted. It's nothing. I'm just thinking about stuff. Let's change the TV. Oh, let's watch I'd buy that for a dollar. I'm into that. What stuff? Well, I have to pay rent by the 30th, which is always stressful, and ah. There's also the fact that I spent a full hour yesterday apparently talking to myself. <laughs> not to mention the fact that two days ago I found out the bar is at risk of closing. So not only is my life being shaken up, I'm apparently going crazy. On top of that, neutering four left me complete with a completely empty wallet and I'll get evicted if I miss rent again. And there's all the beer cans around my apartment and chill. Sorry, did you say something? <laughs> can you really work today? Of course I can. Let's go through the basics then, shall we? Just in case. This is how they justify a tutorial mode. Jill is very distracted today. If you can make a piano man, I'll skip the rest. But bear with me for a second here, okay? Let's start with the sugar rush. Look for the recipe using the navigation bar and the recipe book that will show up on the top left. You can also sort drinks by flavors like sweet or types like manly. Drag the desired amount of ingredients from their cells on the right to the shaker in the center. When done, press the mix button and then press it again to stop mixing. Click the serve button or the drink itself to serve it and I'll be all. Oh, but if the drink looks messed up, you'll need to press the reset button and try again. You can press reset at any time, even while the shaker is moving. Okay. Jill, I'm the one that went through the formal BTC instruction. Then this should be no problem. Sigh. So he wants either a sugar rush or a piano man. Piano man will end the tutorial. And so we're gonna do that first. We're gonna search by name, P, Piano Man. This drink does not represent the opinions of the Bar Pianist Union or its associates. Its keywords are sour, promo, and strong. Those will be important later. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do, we want two Adelheid. See, one lights up, two lights up, three Bronson Extract, one, two, three, five Powdered Delta, two, three, four, Five, five flanner guide. One, two, three, four, five, and three carmatrine. Carmatrine is the actual alcohol, if I remember correctly. All on the rocks and mixed. Success, it's a piano man. Here, are you happy? I made a piano man. Yes, very, I stand corrected. I can make drink skill. Jill. Let's call him Gil because I'm Jill. Now let's get working. Oh yeah, before I forget. Mm -hmm. You can make any drink big by doubling the amount of ingredients. But if the recipe already ha has over 10 ingredients, the drink is already big. And when a recipe says it uses optional carmatrine, it means you can use none or fill it to the brim. Yeah, carmatrine is alcohol. 
optional carmatrine doesn't count towards making it a big drink. Now, carmatrine is the alcoholic factor in the drink. It doesn't change the taste, but the amount still has an effect. If you add too much, the client will get drunk really fast. So please be mindful of that. You're done with the exposition. Now I am, yeah. Dana, hey guys. <sighs> Who's, oh, bah, eh? Who's that? So Dana found this person while they were out shopping. It was either leave her outside at the mercy of society's finest or bring her unconscious body in here. She's gonna, oh, she's, oh, she's unconscious. Okay, I was like, is she just like hiding back there? She's gonna make such a ruckus when she wakes up. You know that. That's up for you to deal with. I'll be in my office and off goes the boss. You can't just push that responsibility onto us. We have work to do, damn it. There are two of you who believe in yourselves. Do you think Chief knocked her out? That's what he calls the boss, Chief. Nah, that's unlikely. She'd be crowing about it or taunting us if that were the case. It's not like her to pick up such a small girl, at least not unprovoked. Let's turn the music down a little, because I feel like I'm shouting. Right, we'll just need to keep it quiet. She seems to be just sleeping soundly, not comatose. Time to start the night. I'll start working while you go clean the bathroom. Ha 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 Well, you spent the whole weekend on Monday doing God knows what. We've had some interesting clients come in. Dogs, lots of dogs. You're joking. Gil, you've known me for how long now? Do I look like the kind of woman who would make a joke like that? So, as punishment for leaving me to deal with all of that on my lonesome, you'll be in charge of cleaning the bathrooms. Have fun! We've had 800 million corgis. Where's the cleaning stuff? Here. You brought that from home, didn't you? That I did. With that out of the way, let's play some music on the new jukebox. This model needs to have all of its 12 slots filled with songs before it can start. I wonder what was the logic behind that decision. So when every day starts, we have to pick 12 songs. We're going to start the night with Welcome to Valhalla. Um, I believe we can hear them if we try here. No. I don't think we have like 12 songs. Let's do Everything Will Be Okay. All Systems Go. I'm just picking them at random at this point. Sinistitch is good. And like Jill said, we have to fill the whole thing up. Neon District. Dusk. Oh, Karma Train Dream is good too. And let's do a city that never sleeps. There, we've picked 12. We're ready. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey you, get me a beer. Oh, sure, right on it. Okay. He wants a beer. Looks like quite the big guy. So maybe we want to make him a big beer. Believe it or not, beer, not a bottled drink. We actually have to make a beer. So we're gonna make this a big drink, so which means we're gonna double it. So one aldehyde means two aldehyde. Wait, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can't. The beer's already big. Wait, no, no, it's not. More than ten ingredients, Gil said. So we'll make it. We'll double it. Two Bronson extract means four Bronson extracts. One powder delta means two powder deltas. Two flanner guide means four of these. And then eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mix and stop. And we made him a beer. Here you go. Yeah, this one's good. Pretty good, in fact. Nice job. Um, thanks, I guess. You're lucky I was in a meeting close by. This hellhole could certainly use a presence like mine. Dude. Although to be fair, work has taken me to worse hellholes, like in New Jersey 3. <laughs> huh. What kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan D. Dawson, chief editor and owner of The Augmented Eye, which is that newspaper we were reading at the very beginning on our phones. Nothing gets published there without my blessings. The day started with quite the interesting fellow, it seems. So you're the one to blame for the barrage of daily articles on Alice Rabbit, then. Hey, people love those articles. They love reading about that urban legend. 
Can you blame them? The idea of some wildcard hacker working for their own goals and nobody else's? That's the kind of corny shit that brings the clicks from all kinds of people. And clicks bring money and money brings nice stuff. Stuff like cars and houses and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. <laughs> what? Well, I'm not complaining about the fact you write about the hacker, just that you write about them every single day. Some of it isn't even news, just speculations or copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabbit. Well, first of all, I don't write about it, my interns do. The poor bastards think it'll help make them full-time employees. I'm just capitalizing on this topic while it's popular. And second, you're tired of one article about a supposed hacker, but not all the daily stories about murders and other horrors? Well, I always filter out that section. I don't want to start my day scared and bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as is. I don't need to add Glitch City's lovely citizens to the list. <laughs> You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were like you, I'd go bankrupt from the lack of traffic. I mean, that's true. Still, maybe my job would be easier. How so? People get desensit... So he says it. People get bored of seeing a certain kind of news after seeing it repeatedly. Desensitized. When I started in this job... I'd only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Now you need an elderly woman carrying a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. Death's not enough. They need a full sob story behind it. That's why I like those urban legends. They're easier to write about and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them while they're hot and even people like you, people who avoid the murder stories, will see them. That brings money and like I said, money's good. Huh. I guess he has a point. That's like the most cynical approach to news ever. Just write about urban legends because they get the clicks and people aren't jaded about them. What about the opinion columns? Aren't those a good source of traffic too? Oh, I hate those brats. They just write about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone that likes a certain something should be sodomized. <laughs> what? The worst part about that is they know half our clicks come from them, so they get all diva like on my ass. I think you're being too harsh. What about... No, wait. I was thinking of another newspaper. Yeah, the columnists on your page are annoying. See? The kid on the restaurant critique column? Um, uh, shit. Forgot that brat's name. Restaurant? I believe that's that kid. Couldn't care less about his name. Anyway, his column is the least visited of the bunch. He gets less hits than the obituaries. However, he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrageous restaurants. I wouldn't have any problem with that if he actually wrote about half the places he visits. How so? He rarely writes about the places the newspaper sends him to. I've even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming he's a food critic. Poor bastard only gets laughed at when he says that. I do remember some guy coming here asking for free drinks and saying he was a critic or whatever. Did he look like a fat child with a really small face? No. Wasn't this one then. A <laughs> fat child with a really small face. Anyway, all this talk made me thirsty. Try to give me a beer this time, please. Coming right up. Beer again. This man likes his beers. They come cheaper in bulk at the store, though. Let's give him a big beer again. Let's try and get him drunk. Uh, one, two Adelheids. One, two, three, four. Four Bronson Entrance, two Powder Deltas, two Flanner Guide. Oh, four Flanner Guide. Almost messed that up. And fill the rest up with Carmatrine. While we're on this, you'll see slot one, slot two, so I can make more than one drink at a time. We can either make it on the rocks or age it, and then obviously reset it, start from scratch, or a mix. I'm mixing them really quickly because you can blend them, which means you mix it for a long time and it starts to shake faster and then I would ruin the drink. So we give it to him. Uh, it's the big things that make life worthwhile. What about big troubles? Did I stutter, kid? Right. <laughs> so tell me, do you see many celebrities in this hellhole? Uh, no. Please stop referring to this place as a hellhole. The place smells like soap and dog piss. I'm within my constitutional rights to call it a hellhole. <laughs> Jillian cleaning the bathroom. I'm doing my best here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Who was that? Nobody important. Hey, I heard that. <laughs> Don't be offended by what I say, kid. I'm, insul I'm insulting the building, not you. You can think of it as a small hole in hell rather than a hellish hole if you'd like. 
charming. Yeah, Donovan is definitely quote unquote charming. So, celebrities. Not really, at least not that I know of, why? Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. You're not making me feel special, honey. Oh, for real. And second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people. That's why I thought he was asking. Especially the red carpet kind of famous. Those folks people pretend to love, but actually want to see fall from grace. Man, is Donovan here dropping the real truths today? Pretend to love, fall from grace, chill. Are you that naive, really? Why do you think that gossip about famous people always sells? People pretend that they love celebs, but they really want us to see their idols torn down to their level. They want to see them suffer to get their comeuppance for daring to be so much more successful than them. This is true. Nah, I think gossip is just something everyone enjoys, but nobody wants to admit to enjoying. Chill. You thought wrong, but even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They want to escape their lives by living somebody else's. Sadly, I fail to see the appeal in that whole thing. Uh, Jill, I hate to break it to you, but you're a video game character. I'm doing exactly that thing right now. What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks with sandals or if they're dating God knows who? Granted, socks with sandals is practically public indecency, but still. Oh, please. As a bartender, I bet you have a strong voyeuristic streak. Your kind always loves to hear that stuff. My kind? Just like a hairdresser's. This sounds hypocritical coming from you. Even if that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than that person you know from TV acts like a human. Sensationalize is the key word here. Just the other day, I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing to the store. No matter what you say, these people don't exist solely to entertain the public. They don't. They're just... people. But this problem exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating- that's true. They are constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. That is definitely a thing. Going to exotic locales, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury they can think of. All that just leaves the public craving for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to their level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crowd just wants to see that they're human. Hey, the dude that plays the nice guy is indeed a really nice guy. To be fair, the gossip articles don't help. Sensationalizing everything. It feels like they're instigating a behavior that shouldn't even be acknowledged in the first place. You like your big words, eh, brat? Don't call me a brat! Well, two can play that game of... Question mark? Hello? Hmm. <laughs> hey, you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat, hell-bent on world conquest. Sarcasm wastes my time, my money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. Hoo-hoo. A bartender like you must have heard quite a few stories in her career. Ugh, for real? He's trying to get free information out of me. Talk about changing topics. Yeah, maybe. Why? Wouldn't you like a column talking about those? I bet they would sell quite- Oh, no. I don't want to write a paper. A column for your paper. It would be like that priest who published confessionary stories and then got excommunicated and lynched. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender. A personal stranger of sorts. We could have you ghostwriting. Half of our staff do that. Really? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person, do you? Figures. Lana Smithy writes almost all the articles for um, the Augmented Eye, his newspaper. Anyway, eventually the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Not only would that hurt us as a business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients rant about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. That doesn't matter. Well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. Yeah, like you'll remember me two weeks from now. Sure. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Yes, I called you Mr. Donovan. Is that, was that a, was that, is that a problem? He really likes the sound of it. Okay. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Dawson or Boss. Boss is just a title. It's too impersonal and cold. <laughs> uh oh, we called our boss boss. Mr. Dawson was my father and grandfather. It's too general. But Mr. Donovan, now that's more like it. They're referring to me, to the man in front of them, not to my family, not to my position, to me. Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? You don't seem like the kind of guy who wants your employees to be personal with you. Oh, gods, no. But I want them to fear me, not because I'm the boss with a name appearing in their paychecks, but rather because I strike mortal dread into them. Oh, that's awesome. 
Starting tomorrow, I'm gonna make everyone call me that. Look, what have I done? What have I done? Oh yeah, you were asking something. What was it? Drink. Another one. Do you? Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> he wants a beer again. Um, let's just give him a regular size beer this time. Dude's had enough to drink already. One, two, three, four. Mix. Stop. Beer. One beer. Yeah, I guess this one's good enough for now. It's all... The conceit is that all of this stuff... I was going to point with my actual hand and not the mouse pointer. Is computer generated. Jill punches buttons on a machine and the drink pops out. Say, so, hey, kids, this bar have any investors? He didn't call it a hellhole. There was some bloke named Sven that wanted to give us more money if we stamped his face all over the place. But aside from that, no. These bars are pretty much like any fast food chain, so there are no local investors. Why? Just wanted to let you know how lucky you bastards are. Investors suck harder. Oh. Ooh. My goodness. <laughs> Those bastards think they're so important because they put their money in the company. Well, that's... I mean, you give me money so you can make more. Let me do my thing and I'll give you your money. But no, they have to stick their noses and start changing the silliest of stuff. What good is it to be the boss if you still have to work for someone else? I mean, that's true. I give you that. You still have to answer the unions, the government, and those kind of organizations, don't you? Yeah, but that's paperwork. I make someone else do it and call it a day. These losers ask for meetings. They start talking about stuff they don't like, stuff they found offensive. And there's always that one guy or gal that says, hey, why don't you do what that other newspaper does? Recently, they told me that they needed more clicks. More clicks! Isn't that like the holy grail these days? More clicks? I make sure to keep stuff spicy, spicy while still keeping production quality up, but it's never enough for them. Well, you know what? They want more clicks? I'll give them more clicks! <laughs> I'll show them what happens when I do what they want and don't reject ideas. Oh, I'm excited to read the newspaper tomorrow. Don't know who the hell Donovan D. Dawson is. Bye, Mr. Dawson. At least he paid before storming off. I wonder what happened with Sven, though. We never did hear from him again. <laughs> Jill! <laughs> yes? What the hell happened to that bathroom? I told you, dogs. That kind of mess usually requires you to have thumbs. Crafty dogs, I tell you. You'd think their short legs would hinder them. The ceiling, the sinks, the toilets, the vents! <laughs> Shh! You'll wake up Briar Rose over there. I won't forget this. Yeah, 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 whatever. Ooh, a client! Welcome to Valhalla, what can I... Ooh. He wants a big gut punch and he wants it fast. He wants a gut punch. I want to give him a gut punch, all right? Let's make him a gut punch. There was normally more drink making than this, just so you know. The beginning of the game, we're setting up the world, that kind of thing. There's a lot more dialogue than normal. He wants a big gut punch, so we gotta double this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One flanner guide, so two flanner guides. Optional Carmentrine, huh? Let's get this guy trashed. All aged and mixed. Giant gun punch. Here you go. We make money per every drink we make. And if we make mistakes, it gets subtracted off. Hmm, you can actually do it then. Hmm, this crack house is a bar. Yes, we're a bar. Hellhole, crack house. It smells like dog urine and soap. How the hell do you expect someone to feel comfortable in here? It shouldn't smell like dog urine for much longer. I'm surprised you decided to come to our little crack house at Hall, mister. What the hell do you care? The payment registry says, sorry for the question then, Mr. Ingram McDougal. Everything's computerized because it's the future. Sorry about the smell. We're working on fixing it. There was an incident over the weekend. But it's Tuesday. Please let me know what I can do to make your experience more pleasant regardless. If I pay you, will you come with me to a motel for a couple hours? No! <laughs> no? Then I have no use for you beyond giving me drinks. All right, do you want another drink then? Such pleasant clientele tonight. Everybody's so nice. May I ask why you decided to come to our bar then? Somebody recommended me this place and I have absolutely no idea why she likes it. 
She says she's a regular here and all. I'm starting to doubt her tastes. A regular? Can I ask who? No? Alright then. I'll concede one thing. Whoever picks the music at least has decent taste. That was me. Hey Jill, where'd you put the dish soap? Jill, Gills run out. Dana! Below the sink where it's always been. Right. Oh, a customer. Good evening, sir. Hope you enjoy your stay at Valhalla. So any other feedback you want to provide the establishment so we can enhance your customer experience? Man, we're gonna retail. Ah. No, nothing. That's an interesting change of heart. I can't afford to slander this place knowing she's here. Oh, you know my boss? I don't know her, but I know who she is. Oh, really? Dana Zane, the Red Comet. The woman who fended off mall riders all by herself, knocking them out cold one by one. That's an achievement and a title I've never heard before. I know did boss did, I know boss did quite a few things before opening this bar, but that sounds... Would you happen to know how she got her mechanical arm? I heard a couple of stories, but they sound too fantastical to be true. You've had an interesting change of attitude. I saw that woman take out armed riders with her bare hands. Once you see something like that, it's hard not to keep your mouth shut in front of them. <laughs> we should just parade boss out every time we have an unruly customer then. You can relax though. I've only seen her deal with clients personally about two or three times. One involved class five weaponry, the other one a pickup artist, and the latest had an alpaca. An alpaca? Not really an alpaca, but there's this woman that owns a textile company. She got really drunk and she started screaming she was an alpaca. She started spitting on everything afterwards. My boss had to show her the exit. I'd rather not remember that night, so let's leave it at that. <laughs> Can I get you anything else? Give me a pile driver, please. Ooh. He wants a pile driver. Honestly, I feel like suplexing him though. So let's make him a pile driver. What's in a pile driver? Three Bronson extract, three Flanner guide, four karma tree. Let's just make it bog standard. Three Bronson extract. Three, Flander Guide. Four, Carmatrine. Two, three, four, and it's mixed. Stop. Pile Driver, here you go. Hmm, it's fine, I guess. Hey lady, have you ever faked an orc? What? I'm sorry, I think I heard wrong. Is that what you asked me? Like, for real? That's a question I'm not gonna answer. Nope, <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. I was just thinking about how, to, how good a lie can be. I mean, even the most sincere people lie once in a while. Lies can buy you time. Lies can make you happy. Reality will come crashing through the door eventually. But for that moment, the lie can give meaning to you. I say lies are like your porn stash. You know they exist, but you shouldn't acknowledge them. Does that mean you've really faked orgasms because you look like you have a lot of experience? What is that even supposed to mean? Still, that's quite the random thought to just suddenly have. Are you perhaps lying about something right now? Not really. I was just thinking about people making polite comments about this crack. You want me to go get the boss? Of course you are. Hey, I'm gonna need another drink here. Already? Don't you think you're drinking a bit quickly? That's my problem, not yours. Give me a fringe weaver. All right, let's give him a fringe weaver. One, oh jeez. Just like drinking ethyl alcohol with a spoonful of sugar. Out of hide and nine karma trees. Aged and mixed. Age, mix. Fringe weaver. Try not to drink it too fast. That's up to me. Hey lady, have you ever felt empty? Existential dread creeping in. Empty how? Like hungry? No, I mean empty like there's a part of you missing. Can't say I particularly have. I just feel there's this part of myself that lacks something. An urge to get or do something that I just can't satisfy. If you try taking up a hobby, like it might not solve your problems, but it might keep you busy enough to avoid thinking about it. <gasps> Welcome to my life, Jill. That's me, right there. I have a lot of hobbies. Any suggestions? How about you knit? Well, collecting stuff, reading, bungee jumping, combat sports, exercising. Sounds a lot cheaper than the alternative, which is what? <laughs> Bitches and alcohol. 
Well, as much as I don't want to dissuade your interest in alcohol, because like you're purchasing things at my bar, yes, it is probably cheaper than that. I tried sex tourism once. It was like a bloody Russian roulette of STDs, so I left midway through. I once burned my Christmas bonus hiring three women for an orgy. Porn is more amusing and way cheaper. I've also hired a... What? I've also hired a girl to act like my daughter for a day three years in a row now. Nothing seems to do it. Um, have you tried rescuing a puppy? No, you're right. You shouldn't. I'm drawing a blank then. Can't think of anything that might help. I wasn't expecting you to help me or to believe me. Huh? I could have been lying through my teeth this whole time. It doesn't matter to me. People lie, lady. Anyway, I'm leaving now. The smell is killing me. Please come again. Don't count on it. Good. Let's change the TV channel. Some sort of noodle. Phew, boss. I'm gonna take my break. All right. While Jill goes, this is, by the way, this is Jill. There's the boss. There's Gil. You haven't met her yet. So we're gonna save the game. And then I'm actually gonna leave this one here for now. And next time we'll do the second half of our work day. I thank you very much for watching. My name is Wench Fairy. Please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. This is Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartending Action. And we will see you next time.